Hold on. I'm being told. It's Doug Gottlieb Show, Fox Sports Radio. We have some breaking news. Breaking news from Fox Sports. Doug, sources tell me that the University of Wisconsin Green Bay is hiring Doug Gottlieb to be the school's new men's basketball coach. Well, hold on, you're clapping. We didn't confirm or deny. Uh, I am. I will. I can confirm that report. So, as of this very moment, actually, as of this morning, I'm the new head coach at Wisconsin Green Bay. That is, deserves round for applause. Thanks, man. Um, oh, there's a side note. The Doug Gottlieb show will continue on um, as we've come to an agreement that this is what we're going to do. I love All doing right, the show. There we go. I love working with you guys. Um, in a rare turnabout, I'm returning to the state of my birth, but Dan Byer's not. On the other hand, this is a perfect excuse to get Dan. We're going to make Dan Byer a Packer fan if it's the last thing we do. <laughs> we may even turn him into a Badger fan, right? Uh, but the Seahawk fan, I, I do Maybe think, get me drunk, you know, who yeah, knows? I mean, listen, that's a good place to get drunk for a game, right? Um, so, yeah, uh, this is a real thing. And um, there's a lot to it, but the basics of it are, you know, I was, I was kind of raised in a gym. My dad, when I was born, was a head coach at UW-Milwaukee. It's in the same league, obviously in the same state system. It's now the arch rival of Green Bay. And this has been a a lifelong pursuit and the ability to do it and still continue um, this radio show and our subsequent podcast is all anybody could ever ask for is an opportunity. You know, I, I've done speeches all over the country, all over the world about the number one thing you should, you should uh, wish for, right. And you should dream about. And people say like, well, what do you wish for? You know, people wish for health, they wish to be live a blessed life, you know, for their kids to do well. Um, but to me, what I wish for for my children, for my friends, and for myself is just give me an opportunity, just give me a chance. And I get it; it's a different path. I have not coached in college basketball, although I was I was blessed to be a um, a consultant this year for Mike Boyton at Oklahoma State. Uh, I've done that for other schools. I've covered the game for 21 years. I played the game. It's been about my, my, my family's business is basketball. And uh, now I get a chance to, to do what my dad did. And my brother's been in this game for almost 30 years, an assistant coach, mostly at the men's level. And he hasn't gotten this opportunity. So I feel honored. I feel blessed. I'm stoked. And, um, I, I'm just, I'm all the words, right? There's all the words, even emotions, you know? And, uh, you know, I, like, uh, is there apprehension? Sure. But the the big thing is this, Dan, you tell me if this makes sense. I, I'm, I, can, I can tell you my plans. I can tell you how good it's going to be. I know it's going to be fun. I know it's going to be challenging. Uh, I know it's, it's going to be very, very different lifestyle for me. And I think it's going to be different for the players because my style is different than I'm sure anybody else would play for. I also have great confidence that we will be successful. Um, it all depends on what lens you look at success through, but I believe we'll be successful. We will, we will achieve greater than whatever the individual parts are, and people will be proud and have fun going and watching our game. But all of these are just words. So when November comes, you can judge me. And when December comes, you can judge me. And I don't think... I can guarantee that you'll sit there and go like, hey, he lived up to what his expectations were, which is we're going to get more out of whatever we got than whatever they would do individually. They will be a cohesive group and they will have fun and you're going to like coming to watch us play, right? Because this is not drudgery. Basketball is designed as an aerobic activity and college basketball is designed to represent your university and be the front door of the university. And oh yeah, by the way, it's supposed to be fun. Practice every day isn't always fun. You know, trying to line dudes out and get them better and not always fun. But until, like, I'm going to have a good time. Plus, like, I think I'm going to get really good seats to Packer games. Your goal of finally going to Lambeau Field. I've never been to Lambeau! 
should be accomplished. I've never been to Lambo. Further down the list of things to do, but I think no, you'll be able to cross down it off. What down, okay, you know what number one on the list is after the press conference and the getting the players and all that other stuff. <laughs> Has any Packer player ever ridden an e-bike? From the training camp? Oh. Yeah. I'm not sure if it happened last year. Okay, so but. listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout out. I have, I have one good friend, Drew. I'm counting on you to send me the coolest e-bike ever. I have my own, but I want a Packer player. I want Jordan Love to ride my e-bike. Frank, that's my, that's my goal. It's like that's Americana. That should be, yeah. That's like Americana. That should be goal number 732 on the list. No, I think, yes. Never, I think it, that we've got to get to other things. We've got to get these fighting Phoenix back to the NCAA tournament. Yes. We got to get, we, we, well, first, Glory we, days first, of the early we, 90s. first we want all the dudes that are there. We want them all to stay. Okay. Okay. Secondly, we're going to go get some good ones. Third, we want, we want to raise some money. Okay. Because none of this is done for free. Okay? None of this is done for free. And then we got to start that process. But in terms of things I want to do in Green Bay, like I want to go to Summerfest. <laughs> uh, Brian Anderson, who calls Brewers games, he's like, I can maybe get you on a little Brewers broadcast. Like, Brew Crew, let's go. Let's do it. Cecil Fielder still play for them? Prince. Cecil Cooper? Cecil, Cecil Cooper. Cooper. Cecil Cooper. He's combining Brewers. Yeah. Polly Molitor? <laughs> Robin Yount? Is yeah. Robin Yount retired? Kidding. Um, I took a visit to Marquette, and we played quarters with Mike Dean and his staff at a Brewers game at County Stadium. Of course, haven't been to, haven't been to Miller Park. But excited to do that. American Family uh, Field, Damn. no. Yes. All these things are changing. Don't worry, I got, I got on the Marcus Amphitheater <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I, I, w- I want to have Jordan Love ride my bike. That's a big one. I, I have a Huffy, I have a beach cruiser, and I have an e-bike. I think I'm going to bring the e-bike. Um, Jay Stu, I, you, you told me like your phone's blowing up over this deal? Yeah, um, everyone assumes that I have all the uh, the dirt, and uh, I've been I've been getting hit up pretty consistently since about what nine a.m. this morning. How does this impact your job? Is their main concern? Because oh, like, I'm sorry, Jason, like you fired. My bad. Did um, I not tell you? Yeah. I'm kidding. No, but I uh, I'm real excited about this. I'm so excited for you, um, and I'm interested to see how moving forward things play out because um, you know. I don't know if anyone in the history of the planet has ever hosted a national radio show and been the full-time head coach at a Division One basketball program. So I'm going to get a first-row seat to see how you accomplish these gymnastics. Um, okay. Well, as you know, like I work for way too many people this year, so now I only work for two people. I work for the University of Wisconsin System, and uh, during the hours of the show and the podcast are the hours in which there's no – there's no AAU program that I get to uh, get to be part of. I've di- I got to divest in that, and I have some really good people that run it. Uh, and unfortunately, I won't be able to call, you know, college basketball games for Compass and Fox Sports One and uh, and uh, uh, Westwood One in the NCAA tournament. I don't know if I can do Westwood One in the NCAA tournament. I'm gonna try and do that because that was super cool. Um, well, you'll be playing in the NCAA tournament. Well, that's yeah. After we win, after listen, I Sweet Sixteen is a little tough first year, so I'm thinking. First, second round, but like, look, when we get if we had beaten the Sweet Sixteen, then I could I could do radio. That'd be that'd be cool. Um, I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking, Dan. Tell me if you like this. I'm thinking Celtic style uniforms. Like, there's a lot you can. There's not a lot you can do with green and white. Now we're in a we're an Adidas uh, brand school. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about like copying the classic Celtics look? And I'm I, not talking about the alternative jerseys where they can't stand with the Celtics. I would I would say. I, I'm fine with that because I love the Celtics look. Anything throwback wise, again to the glory days of the of the early '90s, I think would be appropriate and welcomed. It like truly that. was the glory days, like to get down to brass tacks. Like Bro, it was, yeah. yeah. Okay, so can I tell you the coolest parts about this whole thing? Okay, first thing is I got a call today from uh, Danny Hurley, and Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley remains my idol. Like I literally, Bobby Hurley used to stand with his hands on his back like this. And he was my idol. Both of them called, gave me some advice, gave me a pep talk, and sent me a, a, a cool text. But I told Jeff Norgard this exact story. Okay, um, you guys remember what was the what's the uh, oh man? You guys remember Legend Sports Bar and Grill? 
Sounds yeah, familiar. Yeah. I think I'm, it's still around in Orange County. Okay, so legends. There's legends in Newport Beach, and there was legends in Santa Monica. So Jeff Norgard and Tony Bennett was the backcourt. You're talking about the glory days, right? When, yeah. When they beat Cal. Well, Tony Bennett wasn't there. Then. Okay, Tony. Tony on. was gone. Okay, but Jeff Norgard was their star player. Yes. Okay. So when Jeff is there, hey, I'm watching Cal lose to Wisconsin Green Bay. And my dad had known Coach Bennett forever, forever. And what Jeff didn't know, and I told him today, was, um, you don't know this, but our paths crossed twice. Once was, my dad had coached against Jason Kidd, and Jason Kidd and Kevin Ollie were on the same team, Team ARC. And uh, my, my dad's, like, best team ever got smashed by Jason Kidd. So I already didn't like Jason Kidd. And then Jason Kidd... Uh, beat Miles Simon in the state championship at Arco Arena. He got a dunk, took off his shirt, was done. Like, he dominated the game. But that was that was like modern day's, like, best team. They got demolished by Jason Kidd and St. Joe's Alameda. And then, of course, uh, they also got Lou Campanella fired. Campanella fired at, at Cal. I wasn't a Jason Kidd guy just because of those things. I think he's he was an amazing point guard, an amazing player. But at the time when they played Green Bay... Um, I became like the biggest fighting Phoenix fan ever because of that moment. It's pretty cool, right? And then today I talked to him on the phone and I was like, hey, I get to coach your program. It's really cool. Really cool. Uh, anyway, so not a lot going on. Not a lot going on. Right. Um, right. No problem. No problem. No problem. Um, most interesting name of somebody who's texted you. Chase two over this. So you're like, why are you texting me? I don't think it gets any bigger than Rob Parker. Rob Parker just texted me twice. Yeah, by little far little the Mazel Tov from Rob Parker. Oh, 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 Rob Parker. Um, yeah, it's pretty are, cool stuff. Are you are you ready for all this? There's a lot. There's and there's a lot. There's a lot out there. You know. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, look. A lot meaning what negativity? A lot meaning the job? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's there's a lot of people that don't think that you can that you can do this. They look and they say like, "Hey, he hasn't coached at this level." Sure. Um, there sure. are people who obviously bring up credit cards and those. You've I know you've addressed it before, but it's it's out there. Sure. Like, how do you deal with all that? You know, as as you know, and I I think I've done a pretty good job. As as you know, though, um, the. Uh, the negativity that I like was it last week or the week before I tweeted out about Caitlin Clark's jump shot and the, 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 it's a flawed release as she releases it at starting it from the left side of her face. Sure. And I asked Mike Procorpio corpse, a, a world renowned basketball and development expert. Matter of fact, he was Kobe Bryant's guy. So that's all I did 13 million impressions later. And if you go and look at the responses in that, I'm everything from a chauvinist um, to a racist to an idiot uh, who couldn't shoot, shouldn't tell her anything about it, um, to uh, just a a blowhard hot take specialist, right? Um, So if you can survive in this business with the world, the cesspool of negativity, then yeah, I'm I'm fine. Like I'm built for that. It's okay. Uh, What I learned, I had... I had an agent who's now the CEO of WWE. His name's Nick Khan. And I remembered when I left ESPN, I had a five-year deal on my contract. Five years on my contract. And I left because I wanted to be close to my family in California. And I wanted to see my kids in the afternoon. I was doing four to seven radio. And then I was doing for five, six months a year. I was doing college basketball. And then I was filling in other shows. So gone on weekends for five, six months and every afternoon for uh, 11 and a half months. Like that's not much of a life. So I wanted to get, so there was truly um, family personal reasons and the professional opportunity of doing the final four, which ESPN didn't have. So I, I could not have left on better terms, but then, you know, a couple years later there was sniping and you had people saying negative things at that place. And Nick Khan is his name. Nick, um, I had drinks with him and he's like, listen, you do know everybody hates on everybody, right? 
I was like, well, I'm not really that way. Like I like other people to get opportunities. Like if it's not me, it's somebody else. He's like, yeah, but that's not how the world works. You know? And if they're sniping at you, it makes them feel better about who they are. They're just projecting, you know, whatever. And I have no doubt that there's assistant coaches out there, head coaches out there who wanted that job, who their first reaction is, why would you hire that idiot? He doesn't know what he's doing. Any human being that has ever played for me, I would offer them, call them. Any human being who has ever played for me or coached with me, they would just call them. And they will say like, look, I'm not perfect, easy to play for. My son probably gets it the hardest, but they all loved it. They all enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm good with who I am. And I got really, really thick skin. But I also, I know enough to know what I don't know. There's plenty I don't know. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hire people that know what I don't know. You know, my, my worst flaw is I have terrible time management skills. I just do. I say yes to everybody. And what ends up happening is some people get cut, cut short in their time or I run over in meetings. The, my first hire is somebody who's going to handle all that for me. So I actually think I'll be more efficient with my time. And even this show is going to be even better. Plus, here's the thing that this show is going to offer you. This show is very, very real. From moving to lifestyle changes to actually knowing what's going on in sports. And not just in basketball. Obviously, I, I have a great connection. Uh, Mark Murphy has been, he's a... He helps, he, he, he loves a Green Bay basketball and he's become a friend. Um, I'm not, this is not going to be a promotional network for the Packers. I do want to point out that I was on the Jordan Love train before everybody else hopped off the train that they jumped, didn't jump off. That is accurate. Is that not, guys? Yes. Okay. You also are in love with Aaron Rodgers. I'm, I'm in love with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers! But I'm excited, man. Rodgers! So, Jay Stu, how's it going to affect your job? Eh. 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 You know? I don't know. I think your job is going to be exactly the same, slightly different. Um, but we're going to do training camp at the Packers. You guys cool with coming out to the Packers training camp? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Does Ramos need to make that as well? Can we have Ramos make that? Sure, he always I think made he'd the... love to. I think he would love that. Oh, my God. Well, he, did he get on a plane when he went to Vegas? Because he hadn't been on a plane in 20 no, years. No, they drive. They drive. We're, we're going to have to do the B.A. Baracus to get him? Uh, maybe he'll hop a plane for this. Hmm. We could get him there, though. That would be a baller move if I if I pulled up with the G5 and said, hey, Ramos, hop in. You know, I don't know, Doug. I got a softball game. I don't know. Anyway, to the now... 757 of you who have texted me and I haven't yet got back to, I appreciate it. Um, I told my kids this, that if your dream, this, this is the response to people who want to laugh at it. If no one's laughing at your dreams, might not be dream big enough. So I am honored. I am motivated and I am ready. And I'm the new head coach at Wisconsin Bay, And I ain't going anywhere with this radio show.